you join me inside the cabin of the 2020 Porsche Cayenne Coupe. And I'm just going to come right out and say it. I don't like coupe design things. I like coupes, two-door, sports car, coupes. But I don't like this trend of coupe design sedans. And now especially coupe design SUVs. Because... Is it really a sport utility vehicle still if you're sacrificing cargo capacity for a sloping roof line? I don't think so. But now Porsche's hopped on the bandwagon with the Cayenne Coupe, and I guess I have to see whether it's time to change my tune or continue to mock this really strange, unfortunate trend. That's today. And there it is the Porsche Cayenne Coupe, competing in the most useless segment in the entire automotive industry, in this humble reviewer's opinion. But before we get into this, a couple things. If you have not subscribed to the channel, if you wouldn't mind subscribing, that would be so cool. We've got daily videos for you, you don't want to miss those. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification thing, and get you updates. We also have a POV day drive and a POV night drive for the Cayenne Coupe, along with a walk around. And I did not get to do a live Q&A with this one, but if you have any questions about the vehicle, feel free to comment and I will get to those, I promise. Last thing, if you wanna support the channel, if you've been a fan for a little while, you like the videos I put out, would love your support, a couple different ways you can do that. We've got some mer merch, we've got some merch, some t-shirts and the like. You can rep the miles per hour brand. If you don't want to do that, if you're like, that's just not cool, totally understand. I have a Patreon linked in the description of this video that you can support as well. So with all that out of the way, the 2020 Porsche Cayenne Coupe, this one is a base model. I love when automakers give me a base model because it's a genuine feel. It is the volume model in most cases. Some it's mid-range, but in most cases the volume model is the entry level. And so here we have the base Cayenne Coupe with a not aggressive list of options. The Porsche car configurator will let you tack on tens of thousands of dollars in options. But this one is relatively reserved. On the exterior specifically, we only have two options. This Carrara white metallic paint, which for the longest time I called Carrera white metallic because I thought that made sense, but it's Carrara white metallic, so it's got a little bit of a metal flake, but mostly it's kind of your standard white that in shade will look almost flat gray. I think it looks really good and it's contrasted by these optional 21 inch turbo platinum painted wheels. And these are a whopping $3,300. But those are the only two exterior options on this Cayenne Coupe. So therefore we can look at the bodywork as what you're gonna find on a dealer lot. It doesn't have to be specced up. And let's approach it from the front. This is gonna look just like the standard Cayenne. Your head-on is gonna look just the same. So you'll have this grille that works its way all the way across the front end with a turn signal integrated in the upper part of the grille. We have LED headlights with LED daytime running lights. These four things flickering right now, not actually flickering in, in real life, only adjusting to the camera are the daytime running lights. They look pretty cool. And there's also a Porsche spelled out on the inner part of the headlight. Down below, pretty conservative lower bumper that kind of dips up right here, visually raising the front end. It's a handsome, reserved design. The, the whole car is handsome and reserved. Front angle looks good, and here's your first cue that you're not just looking at a regular Cayenne. This is the stylish coupe version. 
and despite how expensive they are, these wheels do look very good, especially with the yellow Porsche crest, yellow gold Porsche crest, and Porsche written out on the brake calipers. These are wrapped in Pirelli P0 summer tires. Those are a no-cost option on this car. And then you've got a bit of black plastic cladding down here that will expand in the rear. More on that in a second. Body color matching mirrors. And then has a standard panoramic sunroof that looks real good inside the car. And here it looks to be a black painted roof, except that this piece here outlining the windows is not. You do have black painted borders for the windows, which I appreciate. Looks very good. And some flaring of the wheel arches. Not aggressively so, just a little bit. Again, keeping the design conservative. And let's look at that profile view because this is the money maker. This is the reason you're paying that extra money over the standard Cayenne. So you get that sloping roof line. And here, unlike pretty much every coupe design SUV, this looks good. This profile looks good. Even more so when you get to the rear end where all other coupe design SUVs just fall off the appeal charts for me, the Cayenne Coupe holds its own. So this profile is just very handsome. I think it looks better than the Macan. The Macan looks a little stubby. This, with the wheelbase as it is, looks very good. Coming to the rear angle, it's got a squat stance. And then we come to the rear end. Where, as I said, the X6, the modern X6, the GLE Coupe, the Audi Q8, less so much. That one doesn't insult me quite as much, but all these other SUVs just fail in the rear end design. They, they take, let's just look at it more closely. They take this section from where the uh, rear glass tapers to the trunk all the way down to here, and it just looks massive. Not on the Cayenne Coupe. This is really well integrated. It gently flows. You've got a little lip spoiler painted black to match the window surrounds. And here's my one critique for the design. The black plastic cladding. There is a bunch of it. Look at how much there is. So top of the license plate, all the way down to the diffuser is black plastic cladding. There's my hand. But you do have trapezoidal exhausts integrated into the diffuser. Those kind of distill all the black plastic cladding along with these lights, reflectors. But yeah, that is right there. That is the only part about the design that I really dislike. Everything else is very handsome. And that is so strange for me to say, because my favorite thing is to mock out the SUV coupe segment. And here's one that I could actually justify paying more for the style. Of course, the practical elements, we're gonna get into those because they're not as generous as the standard Cayenne. But from a design approach, it already gets a thumbs up. Now let's get to the interior and into the Cayenne Coupe we go. And like the exterior, there aren't very many options, which is great letting you see what you get as standard. There is one option for $3,800-ish. It is the extended leather, this time in slate gray. So as standard, you get partial leather and a fair bit of it too. You get standard leather headrests, seat inserts for the front and rear seats, bolsters, leather steering wheel, leather gear selector, leather grab handles, and leather armrests. So that's all standard leather, but this one with the extended package has leather up here on the door panels, up on the dashboard with contrast stitching, even down here below the steering wheel. Down here we're getting into plastic, but this is all leather leather on that piece below the piano black trim, which is also standard. 
and full seat wrapping in leather. But for the $75,000 that the Cayenne Coupe starts, one glaring omission is the fact that at this price you don't get standard lumbar control. Standard lumbar control is not a thing for the Cayenne Coupe. That is part of a $1,600 package that gives you 14-way adjustable seats. These are only 8-way adjustable power for the front two seats, but they're 8-way adjustable and they don't have lumbar. That is just shocking to me. They're also not heated as standard. To standalone add heated seats, it's $580. I'm shaking my head from behind the camera here because it's just it's baffling to me how you don't have two of the most common things on even entry-level luxury cars that are not here on this full-blown $75,000 SUV. You have to add those on. But all that to say, the digs we do have are generously appointed, rather comfortable. These seats hold you in place very nicely, not super aggressively. There are sport seat configurations that you can choose. I would just get the standard seats. You're probably not going to be taking your base Cayenne Coupe to the track, so you shouldn't need the additional lateral support. You've got Cayenne spelled out on these kick plates here, Porsche on the floor mats. Your light controls are here. I already mentioned the piano black trim. Wouldn't be my preference. I would choose something else like a metal finish because this is just gonna scratch so quickly and smudge instantly. So when you're grabbing for that grab handle, if you haven't trimmed your nails recently, you're gonna be scratching this up and it's not going to wear very well. So I would choose a different trim. If you don't wanna go matte wood, which would be my preference, maybe a metallic finish. But the armrests are comfortable. You've got power tailgate controls here. Oh, and I was just talking about this in the GLE that uh, the 63, that I didn't run into too many SUVs where just a press of the button will have it hold at whatever place you let it off at. But here we go. The very next SUV I'm in, it will do that. You can fold your mirrors in from here as well. It won't do that automatically when you lock the car. I don't believe. But you can manually fold them. And then let's just hop into the seat here. Do a quick scan of the interior. And let's just dive right into the steering wheel. So we've got leather and metal finish. It's plastic, but metal finish look on the centerpiece of the steering wheel. Always prefer when that's not plastic. Plastic just says cheap. This is definitely not cheap. And you've got the Porsche crest with some texture. Such a tactile person, so texture is great. Here is your drive mode selector. I will talk more about that in the driving portion. You've got some controls here on the steering wheel. Not super cheap, higher quality plastics and this Right controller controls what shows up in the digital portion of the display. So that's an analog tack, very common for Porsches. Or actually, it's on all Porsches. Uh, the tack is front and center. And then for the more modern models, the portion to the left and right of the tack are digital. So you can look at your map view, your telemetry data. Ooh, G-Force and your last lap using the Sport Chrono. And that's pretty much it. And then you have got your speed displayed right there below the tack, along with your gear select. And then off to the left, we have some more data to show you, your trip information, the outside air temperature, and your drive mode in off-road position. That's with these, your volume, volume controls are here and you've got some, uh, well, they, they feel pretty high quality paddles, but they're not very large. That's okay, there's a good solid feel when you click them into place. Good feedback. You hear that? It's quality. Then down here is your 
cruise control, no adaptive cruise control, lane can be assist, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic. Those are all not standard. You can add them on, but they are not standard. Turn signals, let's hear one of those. Not too bad. If you wanna hear those in 3D, I've got the POV drive for you. And then the leather wrapping for the steering wheel, it feels very high quality, soft, and the the wheel design itself is really handsome. I like all Porsche wheel designs, but the way the wheel is shaped is perfect for holding it at nine and three. And then up here, I showed you your Sport Chrono clock, which adds something to the dashboard, an otherwise plain dashboard with the contrast stitching up here. No head up display on this one. That's not a standard feature. It's part of the driver assistance pack with all the active safety stuff. And then in here, we have some controls that will adjust your infotainment settings. So if you want physical buttons, they're not actually buttons. They are, they're just selectors. So you can feel them. It gives you some haptic feedback when you select them. This is not a volume control. This is your volume control. And that's just the standard audio system. It's pretty good, but this will help you move along if you don't want to be using the touch functions, which it does have. Over here, you can quick select your off-road mode. Again, you can get to it with the touch, touch functions in the infotainment itself, but you can just press that haptic feedback control and it will bring you to your types of off-road settings. I did take this Cayenne Coupe off-road. actually did it because I typically make fun of mid-size SUVs with all mid-size luxury SUVs with all this off-road gear but then I actually took it off-road and I'm like all right I could see why you would use it and if you do use it kudos to you but you've got a few different levels for your active air suspension this one yet another option on this vehicle it has the PASM Porsche active suspension management system with the air suspension and I will list the price of that right now because I can't remember off the top of my head but you've got a few different drive modes here and notice when I take my hand away, but then bring it back, it gives me a different level of menu selections there. So it'll go away in a second, then I'll bring it back. And which height you want your chassis. Top view display. Well, it's only really parking sensors. You can option on a surround view system as part of the, I think it's the premium package or standalone. What One great thing about the Porsche configurator is you can add on a package that has a bunch of stuff, or you can just individually say, I want heated seats, and I want the active air suspension, and a Por I want Porsche dynamic chassis control. So your individual settings, you can make them show up on your spec sheet. Navigation, pretty cool nav system. Lots of depth to, this, to the display and crisp colors. Very responsive system here. I like it. Your drive selection is when you can select your drive mode from here or on the steering wheel. Just use this, this is so much easier. You can raise and lower the spoiler if you want to. Just if you wanna be showy all the time, you can have that up. You can turn off the start stop system if you want to. I wish you could just turn it off and leave it off, but you have to turn it off every time you get in the car. Vehicle settings, display. This one does not have ambient lighting. You can add that on if you want to. Your sport chrono, if you're gonna do some lapping, you can record those in there. Dual zone climate control. We've got some apps, weather, news, nearby gas station and hotels. These are your available safety systems. This one, as you can see, does not have many. It's got park distance alerts, basically your parking sensors, it's got those. Devices, Apple CarPlay, that is standard now. No Android Auto, not even available as an option. So if you got an Android phone, don't buy a Porsche, or at least they don't want you to. Some more settings in here. But as you can see, the system itself, very fast, high resolution. The menu setup is really easy to use and Apple CarPlay is also wireless. So I'm using my phone right now. I can't actually show you Apple CarPlay, but I will give you a clip from 
one of my POV drives that showed Apple CarPlay, it basically takes up this portion of the screen. So this over here, which you can reconfigure, is stationary, but this is dynamic and becomes Apple CarPlay. So if I had Apple CarPlay here, it would show up in this menu on the left side as an option. I'd click that, CarPlay would become available. Your dual zone climate controls can be configured from down here. And here's sort of a funny thing. Because this car has more options that you can configure, there are, you can already see, this is why I don't like piano black. This is clean. It was just cleaned recently. But these are just the water smudges. And if I put my finger on it, it would be a fingerprint smudge. Piano black gets smudgy and scratchy very quickly. Just won't age well. But back to the point I was making. If I had ventilated and heated seats, you can see the outlines of where they would be here. You can see the little vent and the little steam things that would be the heated seats. But because you didn't choose those options, you just have blank switches. You can't typically see them, but if you look close enough, you're like reminded, oh, I didn't pay for that. So I don't have that option. Here is your suspension. You can have it in one of two stiffness settings, your traction control, this is your parking brake, little cubby to collect dust, cup holders, and a key. Love that the key always looks like the silhouette of a car. Porsche crest on it. Does it have texture? It has a little bit of texture. Trunk releases on there, lock, unlock. 12 volt with some knurled finish for tactile nut jobs like me. And then the center console with a little bit of my sweat on top. Not a big area, but two USB-C ports. And they gave me a little converter USB-C to USB. And then up here, more of that leather trim for the dash. The leather goes all the way up there. So this is what you're paying for with that $3,800. Leather goes all the way across the dashboard up there just has some stitching over here. The glove box, reasonable size. You can fit your manual in there along with maybe water bottle, but not a large water bottle. Which brings me to the large water bottle test. Eh, come on, no, oh, it's a false start. Large water bottle test in the Porsche Cayenne. Will it fit in these cup holders? No, because if it does, I would have put it there. But no, it does not fit. But we do know it fits in the door pocket easily. Grand. So if you have a Nalgene sized bottle, just know it's gonna fit in the Porsche Cayenne Coupe door pockets. Glove box, I'm just not even gonna mess with that. Who, who cares? Center console, if you've already got a large water bottle in your door pocket and need a second to fit. Well, too bad, it's not gonna fit there. So it gets a pass. Gets a pass because it fits in an easily accessible position in the door pockets. That's a win yeah! for the Porsche Cayenne Coupe. What controls do we have up here? For your garage door, you can set that. This is for your cover in action. Let's just a small amount of light through. You can see the outline of the tree there still, but it provides plenty of sun shading. I prefer to have it open at all times because it brings in so much light to a not super dark cabin, thankfully, because we have slate gray. Okay, now let's hop in the rear seats. Now, I set it up this way on purpose to show you the different angles of seating we can have. That is pressed all the way back, the back angle, and this back angle is upright. No one is going to sit like that. That is to accommodate additional cargo but to make the seat angle go back more, pull up on this tab here, and then you press the seat back and it goes into this position. When it's in this position, let me show you what kind of leg room and headroom we've got. So I'm six feet tall, and as you can see, I have plenty of leg room. And the foot pockets are big, so I can slide my feet under, decrease the knee angle, and really lounge. I am shocked at how much space I have back here, actually. That's my driving position, obviously. Dual USB-C ports down there. So all four passengers should have a plug-in. Air vents for the rear passengers, a must-have. And a little place to collect dust, yet again. 
You've got some pockets behind the door. Good sized door pockets in there as well. You could probably fit two more large water bottles. Just load up the fam, guys. Grab handles is a the theme of the Cayenne. Love it. It's a distinctive design element. Your window controls, more piano black, and more leather up here. Headroom. So this is the seat in the furthest back angle. You can see I've got plenty of headroom. But let's go to the more upright angle just to see what it looks like. And while we're doing that, let's pull down the centerpiece where you can see you've got two cup holders and not much else but a leather topped panel there. And then we go to the same spot, pull the back angle up a little bit. And now we're in the more upright position. And let's see, this is the most upright position. Let's see what we got headroom wise. I still fit. And I, if we're gonna go into detail, I've got a longer torso than the average Joe. So headroom in the coupe, the sloping roofline model is not a problem. That's a huge win for me. That's one thing you're not having to sacrifice. But how about the door entrance? There is just a little bit of an ingress there. So not as much headroom as you're getting in, but it's not really a problem because the moment you put your foot in, which I hope most of you put your foot in before just slopping your body in and dip down, your head is going to clear this piece. So you should not be whacking your dome on that. That's a win. Little reading light, plastic, grab handle, but hey, you got a grab handle. And that is your rear seat space in the Cayenne Coupe. No sacrifices here compared to the standard Cayenne. I want to make that abundantly clear. No sacrifice. I thought I told you to go back down. Why are you still up, spoiler? You're spoiling my video. Sorry, terrible, terrible pun. So you open up the trunk. No kick operated controls here. It's the base model. And you see, well first, one thing to note, look how much that comes in from the body. It's so like body over and where the trunk opening is, that's where your cargo space starts. You don't have like a deeper pocket in. So it's kind of, kind of narrow here. You do have a cavity under here where there's your spare tire. Along with, oh, well, that's nifty. They put all the tools inside. But then some other space around the tire for you to spit, spit? For you to spit, <laughs> no, for you to fit additional items. Don't spit in there. I'm not going to, because Porsche would never give me a car again. You have a little bit of a cubby in here. LED lights to show you what you're working with. And then we arrive at the air suspension system. So if this lift over height is too high for you, you need to lower the car. Hold that and the air suspension will lower. You can see it lowering slowly getting there and we should be there. So now, the rear of the car has dropped, and as you can see, it's much lower to the ground, so much easier to lift things over and put them into your coupe. And speaking of cargo capacity, so the standard Cayenne has 27 cubic feet behind that second row. The Cayenne Coupe has 20 cubic feet. So a little bit less there, the standard Cayenne with all the seats folded, which you cannot do from back here. This frustrates me. You cannot fold the seats from back here. There's no power controls. There's no levers to pull. You have to go around to the side and do that and press it down. Once more with feeling, press it down. Now you have a mostly flat load floor and in the Cayenne Coupe you have uh, probably going to be wrong here. 53 cubic feet of space, I believe. And the regular Cayenne, you have 60 cubic feet of space. So you're trading off, you know, a few cubic feet to the standard Cayenne Coupe, but not anything really that bad. The worst part of it is really just, obviously, the sloping roof. So if you've got tall items, they're going to have to go towards the front. They will not be able to go in the back and have this hatch close. 
But that's the worst of it. That's not a huge sacrifice to cargo. Where there's not a huge trade-off, there's a little bit, but the other SUV coupes in this segment don't look good, like at all. So why would you pay more for a vehicle that looks not as good and you have to trade some cargo capacity for? That I wouldn't understand. So that is your interior of the Cayenne Coupe. And now it's time, even though it's the base model, we're gonna rev it and then we go and drive it. So if you are just joining us, maybe you skipped ahead in the video, how dare you? Just kidding. We talked about the exterior design of the Cayenne Coupe. I found it to be the best looking of these coupe design SUVs. Has a few niggles like the plastic cladding in the rear end, but that's about it. It looks really good. Inside, it also looks very good. Very upscale, high quality materials. This one is very minimally optioned and so it's a respectable entry into the segment. But the options list is not your friend. It will not treat you well. It will gouge you of tens of thousands of dollars if you let it. So you gotta be careful with that. But now we arrive at the porsche of the equation. The reason people will spend extra money for a Porsche relative to the competitors. And one is, yes, the panache of driving a Porsche, but mostly it's the fact that they they just drive so sweetly. That Porsche engineering of the handling and just general driving dynamics of the vehicles are just a cut above. But we're in a big SUV. It may have a sloping roof line, but it's an SUV. So we have to see whether it really still holds the Porsche pedigree. So let's start with the engine. It is a three liter single turbo V6 making 335 horsepower and 332 pound-feet of torque, connected to an eight-speed automatic transmission and standard all-wheel drive. It gets the base Cayenne Coupe to 60 in 5.6 seconds and an electronically limited top speed of 155 miles per hour. That stacks up pretty nicely with the segment, as do the fuel economy figures of 20 combined MPG. The engine, transmission, and drivetrain really work very seamlessly together to enable the Cayenne Coupe to smoothly operate around town. The gearbox is just working effortlessly through the gears and it gives you power when you need it in normal mode if you put your foot down, but you're better off clicking the dial over to Sport. I do that the moment I get in the car because I just want the responsiveness from the throttle mapping. So when you have it in Sport or should you choose to do it sort of on demand, you can click the center button and get a sport response that gives you 20 seconds of performance. Then you just get that Porsche performance and it gets moving. It really does. And then the gearbox is more hastily shifting through those gears, holding the revs when you want it to. You can shift the gear selector over into manual mode and operate your own paddles on the steering wheel. And as I mentioned in the interior, there's a nice feedback from pulling each paddle. And then when you end up coasting on the highway, just keep it in sport mode so I can pass at a moment's notice. Or again, you can leave it in normal and just hit the button for sport response. That may be your ideal so you can maximize fuel economy and not hold gears too long. But when you need passing power, it's there. That example, there was a little more of a throttle delay than I would like. You can, of course, go to Sport Plus and there will be no delay at all because it's gonna keep you in the right gear at all times. Or you can even tune individual mode, go into your infotainment and set up individual to have a chassis setting, steering feel, throttle response. Each of those configured to your individual settings so when you click the wheel over to individual, it's gonna have all those calibrated for you. But now I'm on a highway and I'm immediately thinking about that GLE 63 I had last week. And my one complaint, my one strong complaint with the GLE was the fact that on a highway, there was a ton of wind and road noise. However, in a rival, though it would be the GLE Coupe, in a rival, this Cayenne Coupe 
I'm experiencing none of those things. It really feels like a luxury experience in here. If I go over bumps, like the GLE Coupe, I don't feel them, but unlike the GLE Coupe, I don't even hear them. I hear a little thunk, but it's not something that's penetrating the whole cabin. It isn't very unsettling at all. And that's what you want out of a luxury product. You want something that is going to treat you kindly on a daily basis, and most people have highway driving in their commute. If you had highway driving, this Cayenne Coupe would do you just fine because the driving experience, when you're not being aggressive, is very pleasant. And part and parcel of that is visibility. And so this vehicle not having the options like blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic and all those goodies, I need to actually look with my eyes to make sure no one's there. There is a blind spot. There's one in over my right shoulder. There's the blind spot where the sloping roof line meets and there would otherwise be a good size window back there. Now the rear passenger headrest is in my way along with the C-pillar. But where the Cayenne Coupe pulls away from the rest of the herd is the handling factor. The portionness of this car is alive and well. The engagement from this electric steering rack is phenomenal and that's such a weird thing to say. A non-hydraulic electric steering rack, as all vehicles are going to these days, pulls you in and engages you. And that's a wonderful thing. And while the BMW X6 engages you in a way and certainly has the turn in and the responsiveness of the chassis, it's still not at the same level as this Cayenne Coupe. This just, it handles like a sports car. And that's so wild to say in an SUV. I'm just going around a circle right now, but I'm having fun. This is so impressive. It's so impressive. I would actually want to go seek out a Canyon Road in my SUV. That's the wild thing about a Porsche SUV. It's so unlike the rest. Where if you found yourself in a Canyon Road in a GLE, you could have some fun, but you wouldn't seek it out. This car, you would seek out the Canyon Road. And a few things are out there. One, this is pretty much a base model. We do have the Porsche Active Suspension Management and the air suspension, and I would check that box. That's worth the $1,500 to $2,000. I cannot remember exactly how much it costs. That's worth the money for that. What it doesn't have is the Porsche Dynamic Chassis Control, which is ele electronically controlled anti-roll bars, but it doesn't need it. That would make the car even sharper in a corner, certainly, but I don't think it's worth the extra few thousand dollars that Porsche is charging for that because the standard car, what the engineers did to this chassis, to this suspension, is so good that you don't need things, layers on top of that. The base formula is pure and excellent. And, and I mean, there, there's not much more to say than that, which is just that Porsche has its DNA alive and so transparent in the Cayenne Coupe. You don't need more and it, it excels relative to its competitors. And so that brings me to the competitive discussion because at this point, I'm sold on the looks, unlike pretty much every other coupe design SUV. The Q8, not so bad. I, I, could, be, I could be persuaded to find myself behind the wheel of Q8 compared to a Q7, which the 2020 model year updates are better, but the, the Q8 still looks better than the Q7. But the Cayenne Coupe definitely is the better looker compared to the standard Cayenne. Interior, don't have much in the way of complaints, except that you must be wary. If you want certain options, you should just select those options. You shouldn't go crazy with packages. Just say, I want heated seats specifically. I want the 14-way adjustable seat so I can freaking have lumbar but don't go too crazy with the options list and you'll be fine. So that's checks the box, exterior, interior, and driving experience, this is just better. It's just straight up better than the competitors. The engine is smooth, it is potent, and while this one doesn't have the sports exhaust system, that is something you can add on if you wanna hear a little more from that V6. 
but this is a car that doesn't need a loud exhaust to compensate for anything. It just drives so sweetly, it doesn't need those things. This car, starting at 76,000 and some change, is definitely on the higher end of the segment. The next closest one in price is the Mercedes-AMG GLE 43. That's starting around $72,000 and this at 335 horsepower makes less power than that GLE 43, which makes 385 horsepower, gets to 60 though, in the same 5.6 seconds as quoted by Mercedes AMG. And the fuel economy in this is better. 19 for the GLE 43, 20 for this Cayenne Coupe. Then there is the BMW X6 xDrive 40i, which I think looks terrible. I do, I don't like how the GLE Coupe looks, I don't like how the X6 looks. The original X6 that started the segment back in 2008, that looked okay. It actually made me kind of curious. Okay, is this a segment that could be interesting? And then it just got progressively worse. So I don't like how the new X6 looks, but it's priced right. It's priced around $67,000, and it makes the same power as this, 335 horsepower. That's the all-wheel drive version, the X-Drive 40i and it gets better fuel economy at 22 combined. Then there is the Audi Q8, the only other one that I think looks pretty good. That starts at $69,000, so still seven grand cheaper than this. Makes the same power, it's the same engine, same platform. And somehow though, it gets one MPG worse in fuel economy, 19 combined. So in this odd and in most cases, now I have to make an exception for the Cayenne Coupe, in most cases, unnecessary segment, this is the victor. This is the clear victor, especially if you're looking at base models. If you want to get up in you know, craziness, I think that the, the uh, 63 version of the GLE AMG, but again, I would go standard SUV, not coupe, is right as fun as I showed in that review. Thinking of, if you haven't watched that review, watch that review. But if we're looking at these coupe versions, I would get the base model Cayenne Coupe because it's just, it's all around wonderful. And I wouldn't even consider the competition. It's worth the extra few thousand dollars relative to its competitors for the package deal you're getting. Cayenne Coupe, you have changed my mind somehow on a segment that I love to mock. And I will still mock. I'm still gonna mock this segment because there's only one vehicle in the segment I would choose over the standard SUV body style. So there you go, the 2020 Porsche Cayenne Coupe. It is a winner, a true winner. I'm gonna end this in Sport Plus with full throttle. Mm. Handling prowess. It's, it's really not, it's not the best visual thing.